A good midday, Roger Hill Weathering Heights, Velco Weather Hazards Forecaster. This Velco Weather Hazards Outlook, looking at the big picture, we got um, thunderstorms beginning to line up and starting to become stronger uh, in the vicinity of Saranac Lake this hour. Some of these thunderstorm cells are going to be working into the Champlain Valley shortly. Please see the original heads up, followed by another heads up shortly. Current picture right now, we have this uh, upper level low and surface low over uh, south of James Bay, Canada, north of Lake Huron, Georgian Bay. This is uh, pulling in a real warm and humid air mass into the region, along with a convergence zone or a kind of weak prefrontal trough. This is enough to trigger showers and thunderstorms, which will become a little bit more numerous. Currently, they're very isolated, generally affecting northwestern Vermont. So heads up on that. But today will be a day featuring scattered showers and thunderstorms, and some of the thunderstorms will be strong to locally severe. It looks like the Storm Prediction Center is getting ready to produce a watch for our region. Looking at the bigger picture, though, we have this uh, upper-level system and another one following to the west of Hudson Bay. This will probably drop in and keep the flow generally a west-northwesterly flow. And eventually, what we are looking at is uh, dew point temperatures that are way up here in the 50s in parts of Canada and the western U.S. That's going to advect in eventually. But not for a while. We're going to see a pretty warm and sultry scenario here. And it looks like another warm day is probably going to be uh, heading our way along about Sunday with a warming trend. But we do cool things off on Friday just a little bit. And Friday and Saturday are looking like a very good stretch of good project weather. On the left-hand side, uh, you're looking at the European model. On the right-hand side, this is the GEM or Canadian model. This, is the, Both of these are deterministic models. Now, this will only show up every three hours. This will show up every hour. So running the model, this is valid at 18Z. That's 2 o'clock this afternoon. You can see that showers and thunderstorms are most mostly across central and northern areas, a little less in southern areas, but there will be a few even down there. So this will show up every three hours. So... At 21Z, that's valid at 5 o'clock. Most of the activity will have moved on through and will be starting to work its way out of Vermont and into parts of New Hampshire. So as we get into the nighttime hours on uh, Thursday night and into the morning hours on Friday, we clear things out and we're setting up what will be really good project weather with kind of a very weak ridge of higher pressure, kind of in between weather systems, if you will. So we get into basically Saturday, also a very nice day. No worries here. It does look like we get into just a little bit of moisture that's going to be developing late in the day. But uh, again, that's going to stay to the north of our region. Right now, it looks like most of Sunday is going to eke out a pretty decent day before this system here begins to track in. But notice, this is uh, zero Z. This would be about 8 o'clock in the evening on Sunday. So a lot of that moisture is going to hold back just a little bit, according to the European model. I've been seeing this trend kind of push things back a little bit for Sunday. That means this is going to be a very warm and sultry, warm to hot kind of day, where temperatures could hit the low 90s and heat indices could be in the mid-90s, potentially maybe even closing in on 100 degrees ahead of this business here as it pulls up and rounds the corner around the Azores and Bermuda High. And running the modeling just a little further along here, we see Sunday um, and 12Z Monday. We're looking at mostly a Sunday night phenomenon or Sunday evening. We could see some isolated to widely scattered, strong to locally severe thunderstorms in the making on uh, Sunday late afternoon into the evening hours. I think that's going to be the most ferocious period. And then things will probably more than likely settle down as we lose daytime uh, heating and conditions will just support showers and a few isolated embedded thunderstorms in the mix into the day into the morning hours on Monday before we start to see some clearing now that clearing begins to work in and that'll set up a, another nice day with lower dew points and cooler temperatures as we head into Tuesday and it looks like beyond that point going into Wednesday as well with uh, mediocre high pressure and control kind of in between weather systems later Probably more showers and thunderstorms will develop as we get into the mid to late part of next week. Looking at the GFS ensemble centered on the Montpelier grid point, these are uh, three hourly QPFs, and this is our main batch here. This is uh, 12 Z, 8 o'clock in the morning, so indicating what's going to happen for this afternoon, and then things uh, start to improve. We get into uh, a drier stretch of weather, and then we're looking at Sunday's 
bit of business, and the GFS Ensemble is indicating that potentially there could seem to be some uh, heavy rain-producing type thunderstorm cells on Sunday night. Beyond that point, another little bit of a drop-off, and then the next round, and so on and so forth. Now, the total QPF looks like this. This is accumulated precipitation, so we bump it up around 2 to 4 tenths of an inch, and then wait till Sunday night, and then we bump it up again. But notice, we're not seeing a tremendous amount of rainfall here. What goes with thunderstorms is high dew point temperatures, and indeed, this afternoon, we're looking at dew points up around the 70 degree mark, so very, very sultry. Then a nice drop off and much less humid conditions until we build up the dew points once again, and that'll be along about Sunday. After that, another drop off and much better weather here and really good project weather to develop for the early to mid part of next week. Convective available potential energy with the uh, GFS Ensemble. Uh, you can see that it's a big day today. I suspect that Sunday will also be a fairly big day. Now overlaying that with shear, looking at around 30, 35, 40 knots, drop off, and then also along about Sunday, even stronger shear, 40 to 50 knots, and that's automatic for uh, severe weather, provided we have enough instability, not a lot of cloud cover, and those thunderstorm cells can grow tall and tap into those stronger winds aloft, and it does look like that chance will take place on Sunday, Sunday late in the day and Sunday night. Weather Prediction Center, total QPF, the seven-day total accumulated precipitation amounts, running about 1.5 inches. Uh, the blue line here is about 1 inch, 1.5 up here. So a little bit more in the St. Lawrence Valley off to the north and east of us uh, indicated. Looking at temperature, the 2-meter temperature anomalies right now centered on uh, the western hemisphere here. You can see that uh, North America, Vermont, looking warmer than normal. We got cooler than normal conditions, and some of this is going to add vect into the region, but that's not going to happen until early next week. Meteorological output statistics show up here, running about three to six degrees above normal for the next uh, one through five days of max temperatures. Note how cool it is in some parts of Canada and then off the west coast. Now, what about three days later? Well, it looks like this. It warms up and then uh, still cool off the coast, but we're starting to see a little bit more of a neutral situation as cooler air is going to be advecting in from Canada. That's going to happen in the next three to seven days. Looking at uh, new tropical cyclones, nothing expected. There's going to be something moving in off Africa. And so running the model, this is uh, what we're looking in coming in off the west coast of Africa, an easterly wave in the vicinity of the Cape Verde Islands. And uh, this would be valley not until uh, 727. So that's quite a ways out. So over the course of the next five to 10 days, we'll be watching this system. So running that computer model reaches the uh, Leeward Islands uh, approximately, we're talking the 31st of July. And then beyond that, well, that's about as far as it's going to go. I suspect this is going to be a low latitude type tropical cyclone and staying out of our hair. It could turn up and come back at us in another direction. Adding maybe just a little bit of moisture a long ways out to speculate. That's it from here. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.